Well, my name is Dean Jacobs. I was born in the small town of Wahoo, Nebraska. And I grew up in eastern Nebraska in a town called Fremont. I went to Wayne State College where I got a degree in biology. My dad was a truck driver. My mom's a housewife. I come from a very, very ordinary background. I'm just an ordinary guy who, did, who happened to have an extraordinary dream that he was not willing to let go of. So Ballard East, how many of you dream? How many of you daydream in class? And teachers are allowed to raise their hands on these questions too. All right, cool. Well, I had, I had a dream. I had a dream, and that was the dream to take a trip all the way around the world. And not just a two-week holiday, but more of a journey to allow the essence of a place to sink in your skin so you can begin to understand what it means to live in some place like Australia, New Zealand, Nepal, India, certain parts of Africa. Eventually I went to work for a big company called Pfizer Animal Health. I was their national dairy specialist. I used to fly all over the United States working with big dairy farms. And I was very successful, doing really well with them. And I started asking myself, how much stuff do you really need in order to be happy? And got reconnected to my dreams in that process. And it was my dream to go explore the world, not to help increase Pfizer profits by 0.0001%, right? You know, and that was the reality of, of it. And I got really clear, like, well, I could continue on with this, or I could take a risk, quit my job and sold my house and sell my house to stay true to what my heart really wanted to do. And I've done a lot of brave things in my six years of travel going through 55 countries. But for me, the bravest thing I have ever done in my whole life was the day I called Pfizer up and said, I'm leaving. That was a big day. I mean, it still makes me even a little nervous now because when you grow up poor and you finally got a good job and you're making a lot of money, then that's what life's supposed to be. But for me, life was much more than that. So I had to find the internal courage to say, you know what? There's more to life than that for me than to take that step. And I never turned back. I used to fly all over the United States working with the biggest dairy farms in America, 5,000 cows and larger. So I spent a lot of time walking through cow doo-doo. And I was doing pretty good. And I was pretty happy. Then I started asking myself some questions. Questions like how many cell phones? How many Game Boys? How many houses? How many cars? How much stuff, Dean, do you really need in order to be happy? It was my dream to travel the world. And you know, as a result, I ended up writing a book about that. You know how we think about one day I'm going to write a book, that conversation? Well, I kept a journal as I went on that first trip around the world. And I actually kept it online. And people, the strangers started emailing me and said, this is really good, you should convert this into a book one day. And that's when I discovered that I actually had a talent or a skill or a gift to write. So when I finished that first trip around the world that lasted for two years through 28 countries, I thought, all right, I'm going to convert this into a book. So that's how I created a book. And traveling is very rich. And it is loaded with opportunities for us to learn and grow. But from my own personal viewpoint, it's only um, can serve the world. It's, it's really, how do I want to say this? Um, it only has great value with when we can take those experiences and transform them into teachable moments and use them to teach people about the world and to inspire them to be engaged in the world. I mean, I, I, could, I could have done I could have done that first trip, travel around the world, and never went into schools. But one of the quests became, there's two things going on, like, how do I have this treasure inside of me? And it's not a kind of treasure to be hoarded, but one to be shared and, and used in a way that educates and inspires people that contribute to my community around me to step up to the plate, to, to challenge us to do better, to be more engaged with one another so we can leave the world better than what we find it. Have a healthy community. Well, this is Dean's story time. <laughs> I feel like an old guy. I should have a pipe in my corn cob pipe or something in my mouth. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll bet you could. We got everybody? Are we missing anyone? You guys coming? You look pretty excited about it. <laughs> awesome. You guys coming too? Sixth grade. Oh, all right, cool. How are you guys? Cool. Anybody remember when I was here two years ago? Cool. Who didn't hear me two years ago? Right? All right. And who did hear me two years ago? I don't. I don't remember. 
Oh, anybody remember what I talked about? What I talked about? About exploring the world and then enjoying new things. Oh, now you remember. I told stories. Now, the, uh, what? Let's see, what grade are you guys? Seven. Seven. So that would have put you in Ballard, fifth Ballard East at that time. So I think I talked about my trip down the Amazon, didn't I? And I went swimming with piranhas. Yes. You remember now? Yes. Yeah, and I had monkeys climbing all over me. Right? Now you remember? Yeah, I met the little boy. Never guess who I just went to go see. Right, a month ago. Last month ago, I was in the Amazon rainforest, took a, taking him some more school materials. Uh, when I first came back from the first trip, I knew the vice president for the middle school in Fremont, Nebraska. We, he and I went to high school together. I'll never forget it. I walked in his office and I go, Kevin, I just finished this two-year trip around the world. I'd be happy to come in and talk to the kids if you think this would be of value. It has to be of value to contribute. And he goes, well, I'll talk to the teachers and I'll let you know. Well, he goes, the teachers said, yeah, and they all want you. So I spent a whole week in the school talking to every class of every social studies teacher in the middle school. Because back then I had no idea really how to do it. I was doing with a slide projector. I'll never have that sound still embedded in my mind. The fan, you know, going on kind of thing. And it was in that process I discovered that I had a gift to talk to kids. I didn't know that. I'm not a trained teacher per se. And as an educator, I'm just someone who's really passionate about sharing about the experiences that I had to share them in a way that educates and inspires people. So in that, I got some insight that I, was, I have a gift, some skills. And when I got ready to go on my next trip, the middle school called me up and said, Dean, we'd like you to come into the office. I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> what what I do? Well, they, they pulled me in the office and they gave me a check of, for $500. They said, this is our contribution for your next trip. And it was at that point, I go, oh, what I have to say and how I have to share it has value that people will compensate me for. And the more I've, did, I've done it, uh, the more my skills increased, the more I got more focused on really traveling with the intention of creating or capturing teachable moments. Now when I'm traveling, it's very different than when I first started traveling. I just went and went to see what would show up. Now I go to see what shows up, but what also I recognized things that I know, oh, I can capture this and bring it back home with me because I know that this is just going to capture their imagination and their attention. And that creates that teachable moment, creates that opening where you can drop in those golden nuggets of wisdom that they'll, for, they'll re remember forever. Now, when they were looking for the Mississippi River in the beginning, they couldn't find it. They had a hard time finding it. All these great explorers. Anyone ever heard of Pikes Peak in Colorado? Right? I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Pike. He was looking for the Mississippi River. He never found it. And then he left Minnesota and went to Colorado and climbed Pikes Peak. That's how they named it after him right there, okay? So they couldn't find it, and they were looking around. Eventually, a guy by the name of Henry Schoolcraft, write that down, Henry Schoolcraft. He was a land surveyor for the U.S. government up there. He became friends with the indigenous people. And he went to one of the indigenous people finally, and he says, could you please help me find the beginning of the Mississippi River? And the indigenous person goes, sure, we've always known where it is. We were just waiting for someone to ask us nicely. Well, I was in Huxley two years ago when Hux come, brought me in then. I was talking to kids today. They remember things I said two years ago. It's not like I taught them for a whole semester, a whole year. I was there one day, and they still remember from one day visit from two years ago. That's the kind of impact this has a potential to have. So everybody was looking for rivers that flowed south, but this section of the Mississippi flowed north, and that's what threw them off for a long, long time. All right, so there's a section that flows north, and then it takes a big arch, eventually goes east, and then comes down south. They call this the fish hook up in Minnesota. So I'm planting seeds. I, call, I kind of sometimes I think of me as a Johnny Appleseed. Of Write dreams. That down. I'm helping plant Headwaters seeds in these kids to begins. help them create dreams that they didn't even know existed. Dream. And some of them will germinate, some of them won't. It doesn't matter in that sense. Most important is to, for me to stay true to my part because what that does is that helps create a foundation of hope. Because when they have expectations, the things to look forward to, things that inspire them, that make them feel good, they're more likely to be engaged in their community. They're more likely to do, do their best in their homework. They're more likely to contribute when they have a foundation of hope. 
one of these, you know, Facebook has changed the world, right? It makes us more accessible. I'll never forget one of these Facebook messages I got in the last year. He goes, Mr. Jacobs, I just wanted to send you a message to let you know that I remember the day that you came to talk to us in sixth grade, and I calculated that out according to his age that was seven years ago. And he goes, I remember, he goes, now I have dreams, he said, I have dreams that I would not have had had you not came and talked to us. And he goes, I remember going home that day feeling like anything was possible. And don't we want our kids going home feeling like anything is possible? Because it's going to be from that place that they're going to find the solutions to the problems that you and I can't even begin to imagine that are going to be coming their way. But it has to come from a foundation of it's possible. In 2007, I did, it's the blue line, another trip all the way around the world. That one lasted 10 months. I went to explore the Nile River of Africa here on the continent of Africa, and I got done with that. I took a train across Russia, Mongolia, and China. And when I was in China for a full day, I went for a long walk on the Great Wall of what? China. China. Raise your hand if you want to walk on the Great Wall of China one day. Cool. Good. And for a full day when I was in China, I got to hang out with little black and white furry guys called what? Panda. Who wants to hang out with a panda for a day? Yeah, good dream to have, right? Traveling is a great way to stimulate our learning, to expand who we are and our understanding and appreciation of the world. But that's an expression, more of an expression of make, having a commitment to create a good life, to create a viable life, a healthy life, an engaging life. And this is the Diane Fossey Girl of International. That's who I went to work for. And they hired me for seven and a half months to live on sides of volcanoes to live with mountain gorillas. So that's what I was doing in Rwanda. You know, I went to go see the world, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, you know, laugh with it and love it. And it's through that engagement of the world that I have so much joy. I mean, I'm happy, right? You can't fake happy. I can't fake this. This is what you see is what you get. And that's because it's authentic. That's why on those kids, they just, you see them over in the reading corner, they just lean into it because it's real and they smell it and they know it. And there are not so many times they get to be around that kind of stuff for windows of time with people who can articulate it. So God gave me a gift that I had the capacity to articulate with passion. These are what I have found valuable. This is what I, one of the ways I found a way for me to contribute to the world around me. We had the opportunity for our fourth grade teachers to work with our students in a writing workshop. The kids all enjoyed it. Great feedback from both parents and teachers, and most importantly, the students. I do the assemblies in the morning, and then I'll, in, after that, I'll do a number two to three writing workshops with these kids. And I work anywhere from, from kindergartner all the way to high school, college kind of thing, or adults. And I walk them through and we write. And we, in exchange, or it's, it's an engaging writing workshop where I take images from around the world that I have used or that I've taken and we write about these things. Or we write about animals that I have photographed in the wild and researched a little bit or talked about in my presentation bullet points and then we learn how to make sentences out of those bullet point facts. So that it becomes their writing and not my writing. It makes it a lot more interesting to listen to and read than this albatross, you know, has uh, the longest wingspan in the world. All right. With the wingspan of 11 feet, they make a spectacular sight soaring th through the sky. Sometimes with all the, get this guys, I learned something new the other day. You know what they can do? They can actually lock, they can lock their bones together in their wings and they can fly and they can sleep at the same time. They can fly and sleep at the same time. Because what they've done, they've adapted to the wind currents at the bottom of the world where the wind never stops. Because there's places at the bottom of the world, between South America and Antarctica, where there's no land masses, where the wind always blows. And they've adapted to live there to take advantage of the constant wind. So they just soar through the sky for hours and never flap their wings. How many would you would like to fly and sleep at the same time? <laughs> cool. I really try hard not only to come in and share my philosophy in the world, but also to help them, the teachers and, and the schools and the, and the school staff, to help them meet their educational objectives. And writing is one of them, a very important one. So I, you know, I can be a non-fiction writing model, or, or I can model that for them. And this is what it looks like when you're writing and traveling. And these are some of the techniques that I use to help capture my writing or to rewrite my bullet points and my notes and things like that. So 
I walk them through the steps, how I write about experiences I've experienced, or how I researched my animal book and then rewrote the, those facts into text for the, for the book. I rewrote them, I took out the other words, now I just left mine. What else did I add to the page at this point? A photo. Anytime you're doing nonfiction writing, anytime you can add a photo, it adds more weight. It's better for your writing uh, project or what you're fine to put out. It just, people trust a photo, don't they? Right, good. So this is the final page. This is what it looked like. Now I've got to make it smaller so it fits on there. What else did I add to the page at this point? What else did I add? What? Where it lives. Yeah, a little map that shows where it lives. I don't know about y'all, but I love maps. What else did I add? More photos. Exactly, good. More photos. What else did I add? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the alphabet, so, and plus the big a, letter A and the small A. Let me move it over just a little bit so you can see that part. Good. What else did I add? Yeah. Captions. captions, yeah. Captions at the bottom of the photos. These are captions. Voila, there. What else? Yep. Yeah. Uh, there is a little bit of foreign language here. It's called Latin. That's the scientific name of the bird. Good. Anything else? Dean's Journal, awesome, good observation. That's my personal voice. That's my, comes right from my journal. Comes from my journal. You can research these other things off the internet and rewrite them, but no one can duplicate my voice because that's my experience there, right? So I wrote a story about what it was like to be with the albatross in the wild. Anything else you guys want to add? We're all curious. Curiosity never killed any cat. That's the worst saying that's ever been put out there. Curiosity is one of the most important qualities we've got. It takes us out of the box of what's familiar so we can expand that box and make it larger. The larger the box, the healthier the life. Actually, no box at all. So then we don't have any concepts that separate us from one another. We have principles and values and things like that to help guide us for who we're going to be in morals and things like that. But we should never be putting people in people and places into boxes because that just it doesn't serve us. I mean even when I was nine years old I was curious. I used to go ride my bike by myself so whatever I just I was never afraid to go off by myself and I have friends. I have great friends today and I have sometimes will even travel with friends for windows of time but that that curiosity that that want to see what's around that corner or over that ridge it's, I got a PhD in curiosity not from any university but from my own internal Heart. Well, I don't know if everyone, I don't know if everyone's supposed to be a world traveler. You know, uh, people have to, that's the, people's work as I talk to kids about having dreams. That's their job to figure out what that dream is and no one can tell them what that dream is. Well, how do we know what our dream is? Well, you, you discover that for yourself by trying new and different things to be engaged in the world, not separate from the world. And if it brings your heart joy, you're on the right tra track. If it challenges you to find new to discover new parts of yourself you're on the right track if it brings your heart joy you're on the right track and more important or just or maybe just as important or more importantly from my viewpoint does it leave the world better than you found it you're on the right track because that's how we're going to have a world that lives together in some kind of peace and and can be sustainable and live in harmony yeah okay <gasps> As we hang out here, <laughs> yeah, 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 we got lunch 
for the monkeys here in South America. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah, all right, no fighting. <laughs> How many of you'd like to be here, hanging out with the monkeys in uh, South America, in Colombia, see? In Colombia, South America, where you can get really close with the monkeys. <laughs> Some, maybe sometimes too close. Well, if I can help adults reconnect to that want to and give them just a little push or a kick or whatever it takes to get them to be true to who they are again, well, that's a cool thing. That's a contribution. That's a way to leave the world better than we find it. And that's in my mind, that's my mission, my personal mission, my constitution that I've written for myself that, gives, that pulls me into who I want to be in the world, the kind of person I want to be. I'm so committed to my mission, my mission to educate and inspire, because I know what I do makes a difference in people's lives. Not just kids, also adults too, because it really is a shake-up to, as it reminds people what's really important to them or reconnects to them in their heart what's really important to them. So I'm very committed to my mission. And I'm not looking for outside approval to, from people to this is what you should do or shouldn't do. I go, this is what I'm doing and I know it makes a difference and I'm going to find a way to get from point A to point B one way or another. Because we're all given a gift of life. It's a small window that we're here and I'm going to run with this ball the best I can. So that was my journey down the Mississippi River. Then it was time to come home. Sunset, working my way back to Nebraska to get back here. Cool, huh? At the end of that rainbow, there's supposed to be a what? Pot of gold. I've been to the end of that rainbow and many rainbows around the world. I can tell you, Ballardese, there's no pot of gold at the end of that rainbow because it lives in your own heart. And it comes from treating each other with kindness, dignity, respect. It's never gonna come from the acquisition of stuff. So Ballard East, fourth graders, what are your dreams? Huxley Communication and I and your teachers and your staff, whatever they are, want all of your dreams to come true for each and every one of you. Thank you very, very much. I like kids. I like all kids. And we're kids. I'm still a kid. I'm 52, but I'm still a kid. I mean, that kid of discovery and curiosity and experience in life, that doesn't go away and it's not reserved for little kids. It's for all of us. I want people to lighten up a little bit and live life a little more expressively and express that joy and share that experience kind of thing. I liked how, um, how the animals looked and how colorful they were. And I liked how um, he told us like the kindness helped him on the way. He couldn't do it by himself. And my favorite thing about Dean Jacobs is all the different animals we got to see. We really enjoyed having Dean Jacobs come to our school at Ballard East. He talked about multiple adventures he's had, but especially targeted the Mississippi River, which is nice because that's what a lot of our classes are studying and it ties to our curriculum here at Ballard East. Yep, I have. Lots of them. If I'm going to go into a group of kids, stand in front of a gymnasium with 500 kids and talk to them about having dreams, I have to walk the talk. If I'm not authentic, they'll smell you a mile away and you'll be done in five minutes. No, I, it was not easy to stay true to my dreams, but the reward was far worth it. Bye, guys. Oh, I'm going to Ballard Elementary. East. Oh, swimming with dolphins, living with mountain gorillas, climbing the pyramids. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. How's that? <laughs> Good day. Thanks, Huxley Communication, for bringing me in here so we can create this kind of magic, which has this ripple effect that goes not just in the school, but it carries home into their families, which is a really good thing. That's an expression of a healthy community. At least I believe so. So thanks.